It's your Filipino gaming bro, Izzy Snow, and as you can see from my title, yes, I have once again given up on SLI gaming because it's just too unreliable, as I've said before, too unreliable, too problematic. It's just really, really frustrating, and the sad part is when it works for certain games, it's really beneficial, obviously, having two GPUs. Like I said, when it when it works on certain games, it's really, really good. But lately, and NVIDIA, this is all your fault. You can only put yourself to blame for this because, for example, I've talked about this in a previous video. Rise to the Tomb Raider for PC finally got DX12 support and as recommended by Square Enix they want you to use the July 2016 368.69 drivers so with those drivers I'm running the game SLI I mean I was getting like 150 frames per second at very high 2k I'm get I'm getting past my monitor's refresh rate so that's a primary example right there of it working really, really well. But for some reason, when NVIDIA comes out with a new driver that's optimized for a newer game, for example, the newest driver 372.70, which is optimized for the Battlefield beta, which a lot of people are playing, including myself, it ruins Rise of the Tomb Raider. DX12 doesn't work. It... it It'll boot, the game will boot, but then it freezes. And I'm not the only one that has this issue. I went into the Steam forums for that game. Other people are having this issue. And the only way it would work with the newest driver is if you went just one card. No SLI. So that's a total waste of another card right there that you intended to buy and, and, and use to get more frames on your, on your games. Um... Trying to think of another example. Crisis 3 doesn't really run well in SLI when you have an overclock. So playing that game without an overclock with two of my classes, I was getting about 100 plus, 120, not, not like 140 like I would like it to be. My monitor's refresh rate at, at SLI but just like at stock speed of the cards, which with, with the Boost 3.0 GPU Boost, it goes up to about 1987. But you guys will be surprised. And I can tell you based on my experience and based on my personal tests that I've done on games, that little bit of overclock that I add to my card when I get it up to 2100 GPU core clock, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference in my in my honest opinion. And but like I said, it's just it's NVIDIA's fault. You know, they come out with new drivers that messes up older games, which is totally messed up. So as you can see here, based on my benchmarks, I mean look at this game. Dirt Rally running on the highest settings at 2K. I mean, at one point, I hit like 170 frames per second there. So, what I'm trying to say is, one, one 1080 is really enough for the resolution that I play it on. I would even say, based on videos I've seen from my boy Dante Legacy, shout out to him. Um, he plays on ultra-wide 3440 by 1440. He gets close to 100 frames on certain games. Just got to tweak some of the graphical settings, which honestly, a lot of these graphics settings I've, I've mentioned before in, in previous videos as well, you can barely tell the difference. It's really, it's really almost like bragging rights. Um, even like a bigger YouTuber, I, I think his name is, he goes by TechSource. Um, he's got almost a million subs. I remember him saying something about and don't quote me on this, but I think it was him that said he doesn't play, he doesn't even play games at like Ultra because it's a total waste. 
He just plays it at like one notch below that. So that's what I'm doing with Crisis 3. I'm playing Crisis 3 at, at high instead of very high. Um, even the texture at high. And honestly, I, I can barely tell the difference. So I'd rather get 100 plus frames per second than sub 100 in most of my games. So again, as you can see here from the three benchmarks that I'm doing, the first one was Batman. This one's Dirt Rally. Next one coming up here is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Runs totally fine with just one card, and that's it. I'm 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 totally done with SLI. I know I said it before. I quit, and then not gonna lie, I got buyer's impulse and started seeing these classes in stock again. So I was tempted, and seeing all these people in the EVGA forums talk about their SLI setups and blah blah blah. So I was like, that I really got tempted by it. You know, I thought I was completely done. So I ended up buying a second card and it was fun for the almost one month I, I, I had it. I actually just returned it today. Today is September 4th. I bought it back in August 9th, I believe. So luckily, Market Center is awesome and they take back returns within 30 days. So I actually returned that along with the high bandwidth um, SLI bridge, uh, the e not the EVGA, but the NVIDIA brand that I bought was able to return both of those to get my money back and I'm now actually looking to eventually get a gaming laptop and I knew once these 10 series cards came out it was a perfect fit for gaming for gaming laptops and so I, I'm looking for something to complement my my PC gaming and something that I can bring to work and play during lunch and uh, maybe even do some some video editing as well but anyways that's about it guys I'm done with SLI once again Hope you guys enjoyed this video. By the way, let me know in the comments below how you feel about this. If you're SLI gaming, if you're sticking with it. If NVIDIA is just totally screwing over the enthusiast gamers like us who like to use more than one card. It's clear that they are giving up on it. But anyways, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And you guys take care. Peace.